Let's hop over to NA where the top half of the power rankings are more similar than last week as opposed to EU. EU, you got all those Giants and Rocket guys who went 2-0 flying up there. But uh, in NA, Echo Fox still reigns supreme. Don't know how you could put anyone else there. They had a tough week in TSM and Cloud9. They still managed the 2-0. They were hard fought battles in both of those games. But Echo Fox comes out on top and uh, Cloud9, I think right behind them. They were super close in their game there and they had a pretty convincing win over 100 Thieves. Yeah, when you're talking about these two teams, they have to be the people that you're putting at the very top. You can maybe make an argument for Liquid or 100 Thieves, but when you're really looking at who's been the strength so far, obviously Echo Fox at 4-0 have been fantastic. You had a great week in week one with Lucian, Hooney and everything going your way. And then you come into this week and you have tough tests and you manage to pass both of them. Getting those two victories, big time wins uh, for them. And especially, really great to see how they got to these wins, right? They were behind in these ones, and especially with Hooney getting smashed, they managed to stick together, gut it out, find their win condition, and power through. And I really wanna give props to Dardock, guy who's picking up some player of the game nominations and everything like that, really proving to be an important role player on this team who's come in and checked his ego. You know, he comes in and he says, you know, Hooney comes in and tells him, you're doing this wrong, this wrong, and this wrong. And he says, well, it's Hooney from SKT who's been working with Coma. Who am I to argue about this? Takes his lessons and has learned from it, and I'm seeing a much stronger Dardock, and it's really allowing this roster to really gel and propel themselves to this top spot in our power rankings. And then Cloud9, really great team, a strong roster, and then of course, this emergence of Licorice as a guy who's able to carry and play on these things, I think has really solidified them as our number two team. Yeah, and then you got Liquid in at three. And I know people are gonna say, how can Liquid be three? 100 Thieves beat them. 100 Thieves should absolutely be ahead of Liquid. That was a very close game between Liquid and 100 Thieves. And then after that, Liquid completely destroyed Clutch Gaming and Cloud9 pretty convincingly handled 100 Thieves uh, going through there. And if you're accounting for week one, I'm still holding that TSM dumpstering that Liquid did. I'm still holding that up there for them. And I know the Optic game was close, but I still think Liquid is just a hub above 100 Thieves. Yeah, you know, this would be different if we're rating on jerseys and merchandise. I would 100%, 100 Thieves. 100 100 the thieves. Bottom. No, the 100 Thieves. No, 100 Thieves. I'm all about those baseball jerseys. 100 Thieves going <laughs> way up there. But this is all straight on League of Legends action. Team Liquid for me is ahead of 100 Thieves again, based off of the strength of how they've performed in their victories, I think that it's it's been a more dominating performance and a cleaner performance from Team Liquid compared to the victories for 100 Thieves. But I really do like 100 Thieves as a roster. They were built really well. You know, Nate Shot wanted Prolly as his coach. Prolly said, well, I want Ryu as my mid laner. Ryu said, well, I want Medios as my jungler. And Medios said, well, I want Afro Mu as the support shot caller. Woo, Got all those things. What a chain to follow. Holy Top more. it all off with someday learning English and being great in the top lane. And then of course, Cody's son saving his flash at Worlds. Getting ready here. I'm liking this 100 Thieves roster. I think that staying in fourth is a good spot for them. They haven't proven too much, but hey, they're a team to look out for moving forward. Definitely a contender. Uh, then we got Optic coming in at five, which again, people will be rattled by, I'm sure, because they're one in three. Yes, they have a worse record than Clutch and FlyQuest, uh, but I gotta say Clutch in their two wins, it's usually Feb have been popping off, and in their two losses, they look like a bottom two team. They're getting absolutely destroyed in some of those games. Optic has pretty much been in all four of their games that they've been in so far this split. And now looking at their logo with that green and the logo there, that looks a lot like a lime. <laughs> they got a lime logo. I think the green wall optic gaming have done well for themselves this week. They performed, again, they've been in every single match that they've played. You haven't been able to say it's been a stomp or they've been totally outclassed. They've been in every single match that they've been playing in. And I think what you've seen this week has really been a strength and emergence from the bot lane for them. I think Arrow and Lemonation are starting to gel together a lot better and you're seeing much better results from them. And especially in that match against FlyQuest, and I mean, it's FlyQuest, so it's Stunt and Wild Turtle. You're not talking about, you know, the most well-regarded of bot lanes, but still a very, you know, functional bot lane in the NALCS. And they handled them very well and strongly took advantages away from them. I think that this is something that Optic can work on and improve upon looking forward. Yeah, and then you got Clutch and FlyQuest, like we mentioned. You can probably swap them either way. Then it's TSM at eight. 
The climb is on, boys. Started at nine last week. We're moving up one to number eight. Again, 60 minute game against Optic. That's why I'm putting Optic higher there because they've been more competitive in a lot of their games. And then TSM, you can say, again, you can say both sides in that Echo Fox game. You blew an 11K gold lead or you had an 11K gold lead. There's a positive or a negative there you can look at. Yeah, definitely some good signs from TSM this week. And I think that's a hard thing to hear for a Team Solo mid fan is that, yeah, you got to take the positives from a one in one week and the good signs that your team made. But this is, you know, a roster that hasn't spent a lot of time together. Again, we'll reiterate that, that it really is all about getting them to gel together and synergize better and communicate with one another and be on the same page together. Really important things to have when you're on the rift and making these split second decisions. TSM is getting there. They are being more proactive as we're seeing. That was something that uh, Coach Song talked about wait until week three, week four, and if we're not more proactive, early game orientated by then, maybe criticize us some more for that. So I think that this is still a work in progress for TSM, but something you've got to be concerned about is that, again, 18 games in a spring split, one and three. You are behind the eight ball here, and you are a team that is accustomed to getting one of these priority spots heading into the playoffs. You're really going to have to turn it on and pick up those wins if that's where you want to be come the playoff time. And again, I still expect them to be climbing. I think so as well. Come forward. But hey, um, time to put, a, put the results on the board. That's right. CLG down four. I wasn't too concerned after their 0-2 first week because they were in both of those games. Week two, eh, maybe starting to get a little concerned. They looked bad in both of those games. They only won that game against Golden Guardians because Golden Guardians aren't very good. No, it's the flip side of the coin from TSM, you know. Things are looking good, take the positives from it, you know, everything. You came into this week for Counterlogic Gaming and you're just watching these and you're like, I didn't really see anything positive. Once again, you saw that, yeah, they have this strategy right out of the gate. Their preparation is strong, they're ready for it. But then after that, everything falls apart. The game plan doesn't work and everyone's feeding and it's not good League of Legends play. That is why they find themselves four spots down in the rankings. And Golden Guardians at 10? Pretty comfortable spot for them to, that's, to be that's there. That's it. You could probably uh, end the sentence right there. You could, but I think that there is something to be said that they are improving. I think that you are seeing uh, a more competitive play from them than sometimes you see from Counter Logic Gaming in some of those matches. I think if you know the absolute execution was a little bit cleaner for Golden Guardians, you might see them at a different record than 0-4. But for now, they take up the last spot on the bus of the North American Power Rankings. What a colorful bus it is, too. Yeah, it is a lot of colors. It's very nice. Uh, those are your week two power rankings. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.